to write a proposition paper. So we'll go through this step by step using our text and really elaborating on some of the areas that are already in the text. So here we go. First things first, uh, what you can expect is we're just going to quickly review policy claims to make sure that you're up to speed with that. Second, we're going to discuss the seven stock issues of a policy claim. After that, we're going to provide example topics and how they would play out in this format. The last thing we're going to do is discuss ways that this would be written as a paper. Okay, so first things first, what is a policy claim? A policy claim asserts that something should or should not be done by someone about something. <laughs> so it proposes that some specific course of action should, but not necessarily will, be taken. The key word in a claim of policy is the conditional verb should. So here are a few examples. And again, this is from our Martini text. So a claim of policy proposes a change. It usually has the word should, but we could kind of swap that out with maybe ought to or something like that. That would be a synonym, but usually has the word should. And it argues for action to be taken or discontinued. Here are a few examples. You should come eat a burrito with me. You should come eat a burrito with me. So uh, assuming we're not eating burritos right now, come get a burrito with me. Another example, the U.S. should make voting in all elections mandatory. Another example, the U.S. should provide asylum to more international victims. Notice that we have the U.S. should. You could also see this as my audience should. You could even see this as you should. Okay, but we have someone who should do something. So here are the seven stock issues of a policy case. So technically what we're doing here is getting a policy claim, and in order to flesh this out into an advocacy paper or an advocacy uh, speech, really there's seven stock issues that we need to examine. So our first stock issue is, does a problem exist? Second is, is the problem significant? Third is, is the problem structural or attitudinal? And we'll talk about all of these one by one as, as we move on. Can the problem be fixed within the system? Number five, is there a workable solution to the problem? Number six, will the plan solve the problem? And number seven, will ramifications outweigh the positive effects? So we'll talk about each one of these individually. Does the problem exist? So here you have to really show that the problem is a real issue. Your job is to use research to establish that the problem is actually happening. A lot of times we think that it's kind of common sense or that everybody knows, but it's always better to provide sources, to provide research, to really establish your claim and use um, support in order to make sure people know that this problem is really happening. These are the people that have seen it firsthand. This is the research that's been done that shows it, that sort of thing. Don't assume that we believe that this is occurring or that we know the details. So you need to establish that the problem is actually happening. Second, is the problem significant? This is where you tell us why the problem is bad. So most negative situations need discussion to fully comprehend their impacts. And you should talk about why it's so important that there needs to be action. So we've established that the problem exists, but here we need to make the audience, the reader, we need to make them feel like this problem is something that is worthy of taking action in order to make some sort of a change. Okay, so here you could be giving examples of those who are uh, potentially impacted by the problem. You could be talking about some research that's out there again, uh, but here you're trying to make people care. So you've already established that it exists. Here you need to make your audience, your reader, care. You should also discuss how this problem is going to get worse in the future. You want to make sure that you're not just talking about how this problem is going to be something that could potentially fix itself. So you need to talk about how, as we go forward, this is something that's going to get worse. Is the problem structural or attitudinal? So what's causing the problem? So we've established that it exists. We make your audience care. Now what's really causing it? Why is it happening? Is it rules or regulations? Or is it caused by what people think or their traditions? This helps position a solution. So what we're trying to do here is say, okay, where's this coming from? And we eventually are going to be discussing a plan that changes the minds or that changes the policy. So if we know that this is something that we need to change people's minds, then our approach is going to be very different than if we know we need to change a particular law or something like that. 
This is also referred to as inherency. So we have structural inherency or attitudinal inherency. It's the same idea. It's really what's causing the problem. Is this attitudes of people or are these structures, laws, systems, things like that, that would need to be changed? Can the problem be fixed within the system? So this section establishes that the problem couldn't be fixed with just some small tweaks or easy fix within the current status quo. So here you're kind of looking at it like, okay, is there an easier solution out there or do we actually really need to make this change that we're talking about? So in other words, there shouldn't be some more simple and easy way to fix the problem than the solution that you're advocating for. So if we're looking at, um, there's a lot of different ways, you know, we even had our burrito claim here before, but let's say that we're talking about healthcare in the United States. Do you need to get rid of all of Obamacare, all of the Affordable Care Act, or can you make some small tweaks within that that's already passed in order to get what it is that you're trying to get for, uh, for people in terms of healthcare, right? So there's different ways of looking at this. Do we need to make this huge change or can we make some smaller changes that might be easier? Is there a workable solution to the problem? This is where you discuss the actual plan. So here in this section, it needs to be established that the plan is actually workable. Um, here you're going to show that the plan's possible, legal, and something that could happen given the current status quo. Right? Let's say that your plan is that people are going to start flying with wings that sprout out of their back, right? It's not gonna happen. So here we have to you know, look at, okay, is this a realistic thing? You know, is it too expensive? Is it something that uh, politically would be impossible right now, right? So what are the questions that you have to ask in order to say, is this something that could actually happen in the status quo, in the way that things are? And then will the plan actually solve the problem? So in this section, you're going to show that the plan actually is going to solve it. Here you provide direct evidence of plans like this working in other places, or maybe provide analogous examples, so other plans working in other situations that might be kind of similar, okay? But you have to show it. These plans can't just be your good idea. It has to be something that has support behind it, support from research, support that shows at least some sort of components from a strategy like this working in other situations, or ideally, a situation just like this. Will ramifications outweigh the positive effects? So here we're looking at negative results that may happen if the plan was implemented. So um, is there something negative that's going to come along with implementing the plan? And is it still worth it? So this is essentially a counter argument section, right? So um, if you implement the plan, then what negative things would happen? Or uh, if, you know, you does part of the plan trigger some other really negative thing that would happen? Or does this plan actually not work and it would make things work or worse because of some inherently negative uh, part of the plan. In this section, you need to discuss why implementing the plan still outweighs any potential negative impacts, or that those negative concerns are somehow wrong or misdirected. So what you're going to do when you turn this into an argument is really first you're saying, okay, does the problem exist? Is it significant? Is it structural or is it attitudinal? Can it be fixed within the system? Is there a workable solution to the problem? Will that plan solve the problem? And then last, will ramifications outweigh the positive effects? So notice each of these can have its own different type of research in order to support this claim of policy. And at the end of this, we as an audience should be able to accept that claim of policy and ideally take some sort of action in order to make it happen. So let's just take a, a kind of pivot here and, and what might this look like as a paper. So if we were writing this for a claim of policy, um, we'd change it a little bit. We need to have an introduction and then we can have all these different parts. And then last, we'll have some sort of conclusion. So most times, uh, and in any classes that I would be teaching, you'd have a cover page as well, uh, making sure that all of your source citations are in APA format. And then after that conclusion section on a separate page, you're also going to have a references page. Okay, so there's going to be a page in front of this as a cover page, a page behind all these steps is uh, as a references page. Let's take a look at the introduction, and because um, we haven't really talked about that and just the parts that an introduction for a paper or a presentation would include. So the first thing that you're going to do is gain our attention. So start with one to four sentences. That will make the audience focus. Don't speak in generalities. Don't talk about society. Don't talk about most people. Don't start with this general language. We want real specific language. Give specific examples, stories, statistics, or instances that make the audience listen close and pay attention. After you gain attention, reveal exactly what the claim of policy is. Something like, in the next few minutes, I want you to understand why you should take a daily nap. Okay, so notice it doesn't have to be a policy like the government. Um, it can be something where we're just trying to make a change to the status quo. 
After that, what you're going to do is establish your credibility. So tell us what research you've done and what experiences you might have with this particular topic. So this is about you as the speaker or you as the author. In this section, you're going to be talking about yourself. Okay, so what experiences have you had with this topic? Do you take daily naps? Uh, or, you know, what research have you done? Have you been researching, you know, the re have you been reading the research on taking daily naps for the last three weeks and you've read 25 articles? Last thing in the introduction is give us a preview of what's going to be covered. So notice we've got those seven sections. So it's something like this. Notice that they're all pretty much the problem, the solution, and then uh, making sure that it's better to take the solution than no action at all. So it could sound something like this. First, we'll talk about the problem. Then we'll talk about the solution, how the solution works. And then finally, we will show how taking this action is much better than taking no action at all. Um, so you can phrase this in different ways. If you want, let's say we're talking about naps. Uh, you could actually talk about this within um, the uh, each of these sections, but you could just do this with specific topics. So it would sound something like, first, we're going to talk about the problem of college students not getting enough sleep. Uh, we'll talk about why this is a big deal. Then we're going to talk about how taking a daily nap is, is going to be able to be implemented into your life. We'll talk about how that works. And finally, we'll show you how, even though you might think you don't have enough time or that this isn't an idea that work, that would work, how this is going to benefit your life much better than not taking those daily naps. Okay, so that was a little, you know, we could probably tighten that up just a little bit. Uh, but notice what we did there is that we've got uh, talking about a specific problem instead of just the sections without any topic. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go from here and jump into a Word document. And from there, I'm just going to kind of reiterate how each of these is going to have some sort of research. So here you can see we've got the introduction, gain our topic, I'm sorry, gain attention, reveal the topic. Establish the author credibility. So this is you, the author. So not like your sources, but you as the, the author of this paper, of this speech. And then give a preview of what's going to talk about. Okay. Does the problem exist? So here you're going to explain the problem. Support it with research. Okay. So you talk about it in your own words after that support that with research so and then also according to this person they said that uh, it exists because of this this and this sometimes it feels a little bit redundant like you're repeating yourself but it's actually not so that's okay and then after this you're going to explain this to us in terms that we care about after this we're going to do is this problem significant So here you're kind of, you're talking about the problem that exists, but now you're making us care. So who's suffering? Uh, you might have narratives here. Narrative statistics, other research. Uh, again, you're trying to find pieces of evidence here that discuss the suffering of something. So let's say that we're talking about daily naps. Okay, in this problem, you know, where we're talking about, does this problem exist? So here we're talking about college students not getting enough sleep, okay? So here we're explaining this. After that, we're showing how many college students are not getting enough sleep, what research that is. Then after that, we're saying so, and you can see this in your own life, you can see this in your friends, you can see how this research is actually uh, true because you've seen it in your own lives. Right? Something like that for a topic like that. Then when you're talking about how it's significant, this is why you should care. Okay, so here you're talking about the research um, about people being tired, they're less productive, um, you know, how it's impacting their body, how it's impacting their mental health, how it's creating stress in their body. All those sorts of things are going to be showing up in this section. That's going to be supported by research, and you're also going to be explaining that research in terms that directly connect with your audience. Remember, no paper, no speech has ever been written for no one. It's always directed for some particular audience. So begin with your audience in mind. How can you make this resonate with the people that you know will be listening to this? Now, is this problem structural or attitudinal? So here this kind of answers the why, right? So if we're talking about our same, so here we're looking at college students being busy maybe is one of the reasons why they're not sleeping enough. So again, we've got research here. So explain and 
then explain again. <laughs> so here we're explaining the problem, providing research to back it up. So let's say that college students are extremely busy. You can talk about how college students these days have jobs. Show that research, how many college students as a percentage have jobs, and then explain how many hours that takes in addition to being in school and talk about how many, uh, you know, how much time that would probably take in the lives of most people. Okay. And in that case, that would be a structural case because we've got these things that uh, it's not about the way they feel about it or their attitude toward it. It's about certain things that are part of the structure of the day of someone. Can it be fixed within the system? Here you might just be explaining this, but you could possibly be providing some research. Um, so let's say that there was some research that talked about how college students can, um, you know, by being more efficient with their studying, they're able to have more time during their day in order to take a nap. Okay, so if we're looking at, uh, and then that's kind of leading into maybe our our ability to to do that. So let's say, explain here. So we're looking for research. And again, this is research that would show that a plan would be realistic in order to, uh, to solve the problem. Okay. And then explain again. So in your own words, support it by research, and then explain that research in your own words in a way that connects to your audience. After that, is there a workable solution to the problem? So here we're talking about taking naps. Same idea. So uh, here you're actually talking about, um, you know, what would be the solution? How would you actually get college students who think that they're too busy to take a nap every day? Like, what would be the real solution? How would you actually get people to do this? You know, would it be habit forming behaviors? You're using some of the habits research. Would it be efficiency? And then they'd be able to make the choice um, after they find more time in their day by following a certain program, stuff like that. Um, but again, research and then explain it again. And then will the plan solve the problem? In this case, we would explain how naps solve for stress. So it would be whatever this problem was, college students not getting enough sleep. Um, and then we would talk about how getting more sleep through these naps would be helping college students. Okay, so here we're explaining it. Oops. Same idea, right? Explaining it to us in your own words, providing support to back up this claim, and then explaining that to us one more time through your own research that directly connects this to your audience. Okay, so this is, you can think about this is where you're explaining um, the idea, you're backing up that idea, and you're translating that idea into a way that connects directly with your particular audience. Same idea here. Will the ramifications outweigh the positive effects? So here you're talking about, you know, would would college students by, you know, spending less time studying, would that actually be negative for some reason? Maybe they're not bonding with uh, study partners as much, right? Something like that. Because that would be in a, let's say that they were able to be more efficient with their studying, but they used to have study partners. Um, that would be one way. Okay, well, yeah, this this is still, the ramifications outweigh those positive effects of socialization. Okay, and then we've also got our conclusion. So here we're going to review the main ideas. Here we would kind of do the flip side of what we did here. Okay, so we would say something like, so first we talked about how college students not getting enough sleep is a very big issue. We talked about some of the negative impacts that come from not enough sleep. And then we also talked about ways that we can solve this problem and how that's much better than doing nothing at all and that it's really going to be worth it for each and every one of you. Okay, something like that would be for the review. Here you're going to tie back to the attention gainer. So now you go way back up here and it's kind of the same idea, but you're going to revisit it here. And, uh, you know, you don't have to do it this exact way, but it's just kind of a nice way to end the speech. It gives us a nice feeling of completion. So here you're going to say, you know, now that we've, you, you would basically, let's say you started with a statistic, maybe 50% of all college students don't get enough rest. So here you would revisit that. So earlier we talked about 50% of college students not getting enough rest, but now that each of you understand exactly how to implement a daily nap, we can bring that number down starting with each and every one of you. Okay, so notice we're kind of saying the same thing, but now ideally we're seeing it with new eyes. All right, so we've got technically nine different sections. We're also going to have a cover page before this, 
and then a references page after this. Okay, so each one of these should have research. You can see anytime we're saying research, we really should have research in here. Um, if you're looking at how long this should be, I don't know, I'd say probably if you're looking at each of these and we're thinking that each one should have a minimum of three paragraphs, something like that, uh, then we're probably around like five or six pages minimum, something like that, double spaced. Cool. So hopefully this was helpful. And um, now you can go ahead and with the help of your text, and I'll put this outline here in the, uh, the description as well. If that's helpful, then uh, you can go ahead and start writing that paper. So good luck.